Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective. And today, uh, we are looking at one of the biggest in the ThinkPad lineup, the T530. And for those of you that know your ThinkPads, you are going to notice that this one is in an excellent condition. And this is primarily due as this being a very well uh, completed refurb. In fact, the only thing that shows any kind of wear even remotely is the keyboard. So that is it. By the way, I should mention that this keyboard, I believe, is actually replaceable with the T430 and T530. They actually will take the same keyboard. So if you are thinking about parts, that is certainly something to examine. So a little bit of history on this particular unit and what's uh, been done to it. So before purchasing, a couple of things were tastefully upgraded. It has eight gigabytes of RAM. The panel up here has been replaced. The palm rest and trackpad have also been replaced and the battery has been replaced. So this is one hunk of machine. In terms of the specs, we've got an Intel Core i5-3320M, so that's clocking at 2.6 gigahertz, 8 gigabytes of RAM, Intel HD graphics 4000 at 2 gigabytes, as well as graphics switching NVIDIA NVS 5400M at 1 gigabyte as well. Currently inside, there is a 120 gigabyte solid state drive in the main bay, with a CD DVD RW in the optical bay. That's pretty much uh, the basics. It has Bluetooth, it has the fingerprint reader, and I believe from my information that that will work with Windows Hello. And let's just admire the condition that this wonderful machine is in, because that is certainly a sight to behold, especially with a machine like this. So as I mentioned, this is a replaced uh, rebuilt battery. There's a little bit of information out there that's saying it needs to be a genuine battery, but uh, that's been not been my case, considering all of the batteries that I've put in these uh, machines afterwards have never been genuine, and they continue to work. That might be a different case with some of the much newer models, but for the T530 and the T430, they both are running aftermarket batteries with no issue whatsoever. It also uses the same battery packs as the T430 as well, which is pretty handy. On the bottom here, we have the usual ThinkPad glory. In other words, everything is super easy to access. Over here, we can also take a look at the keyboard drainage holes located here and here, which again, super exciting to see. If we go ahead and open up our first immediate access panel here, which again has a captive screw, we will see our hard disk just sitting pretty right in there. Moving on over here to our RAM access door, we have two screws holding it in. Spin it until you hear it click. There we go. And we have one RAM slot here and one RAM slot on the other side. Up here, of course, we do have our uh, replicator port for our OS dock. By the way, this dock here is once again the Mini Dock Series 3 with USB 3.0. This is pretty much the one dock that is the best one to use when it comes to ThinkPads of this generation. Let's dive in a little bit deeper and remove that keyboard. So to remove that keyboard we are going to need to remove this screw here. And we got a picture of a keyboard here. So we gotta remove that. And you'll never hear me uh, get tired of pictographs on screws because that just makes everyone's life easier. Before we go any further, of course, we do wanna make sure that that battery is uh, removed and taken care of properly. And give our keyboard a wiggle. Oh yeah, that's definitely all that's holding that in. And we'll lift this up and over. And inside here, we've got immediate access to our teeny tiny little Wi-Fi card, the antenna there. We've also got access to the other RAM slot on the other side, so the other four gigs there. And here, where this foam piece of cardboard is, is our uh, spot where an MSATA drive could go or a uh, different kind of wireless card. And 
I, I like that that piece is still in there. That kind of gives you an idea of how well taken care of this particular machine has been. And the fact that the entire thing is free of any dust, dirt, or debris uh, shows that the person that rebuilt this did it with the utmost care. There we go. Comes out nice and easy. Uh, our CMOS battery is hanging out back here. And let's go ahead and see what's underneath the palm rest and take another quick look. Now it's worth mentioning because I've been opening and closing this so much that this panel right along the edges very often will separate with age. And on this model it's actually in very good condition. But that is something to be on the lookout for. These will often separate, especially if the panel was replaced multiple times or even multiple times carelessly. Okay, so that's why there are no screw labels because this is all one solid piece. On the 430, it's uh, segmented into two pieces, kind of the main chassis and then this uh, uh, palm rest. So it does look like the entire top case may have actually had to have been replaced. So let's go ahead and loosen up the rest of the screws on the bottom. So removal of this ribbon cable once you have all the screws pretty much out of the bottom of this thing is a little bit counterintuitive. Normally we would push away and then remove the ribbon cable, but in this case we actually need to take that black piece and flip it up toward the ribbon cable and that'll actually release it. And then our whole cover comes off. And for any of you that have opened up a ThinkPad before, this will look familiar that it's a split cable that is uh, responsible for the trackpad, the touchpad, and the fingerprint sensor if it's installed. Now that we've got kind of the underside exposed, we can actually see how well built this unit is overall. So everything that you see here is actually the magnesium uh, roll cage that is so famous on ThinkPads. So like I'm pressing down very very firmly on this area right here which would normally uh, keep the the DVD-ROM tray and there's very little flex to it indeed. This is where your hard drive is again very little flex indeed and back here where your battery is practically zero flex unless I'm putting all my weight on it. So all of the components that have data or keep the computer running are actually very well protected. You've got the copper heat sink here going to your uh, CPU. And I believe underneath here, where the second heat pipe is, is going to be your NVIDIA GPU. Really quirky thing, the speakers are actually asymmetrical. So you've got one on the top right over here, one on the bottom or center left over here which is a unique design choice, but if you take a look at this fellow here, this would be over here, this would be over there. They're both the same wattage of speaker, but again, ThinkPads are never known for their sound, and there's another reason why, if you didn't need one already. So, that's really as detailed of a strip as you would need to go, unless you are servicing like one of the fundamental components. If you were having to service uh, the CPU, then obviously you've got a little bit more disassembly to do here, and the screen is another matter entirely, but I don't need to service that because I know that the panel has been uh, replaced as well. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Laptop Retrospective. I hope that you certainly uh, enjoyed it and have a uh, now learned even a little bit more about the awesome line of ThinkPads with the demonstration of this T530. And as you can see, even as I'm talking and wrapping this video up, we've already booted into Windows. Just going to show the phenomenal longevity of these machines uh, when you just do a couple of tweaks to their hardware. If you enjoyed this sort of content and would like to see more, I would encourage you to do those you know, three fundamentals, like, favorite, and subscribe, all that good stuff. Feel free to hit me up on social media. I do check my Twitter account very often. And if you have a question that just doesn't fit in the comments down below, hit me up on Curious Cat as well. And let's keep this conversation going. Do you have a T530? Are you looking to get one? What upgrades have you done to it? How long have you owned it? Or are you in the market just for a cheap, cost-effective computer that's going to do all the heavy lifting that you need? That's all I have for now. Stay tuned for another video or two on this particular unit. 
and I shall see you next time.